Hey folks, I'm Dieter Melhorn. In this video, we're gonna talk about which is better, mono or braid? Well guys, if you've been around my channel for any length of time, I have done a couple of videos on the benefits and the downfalls of using monofilament and braided line. I've given you my opinions on what I like, and I've given you the opinions of some of the pros out there on which line they prefer to fish with. So you ask yourself, why are you doing another video? Well, to be honest, I think every video I do, I try to get a little better with it and try to cover some things that I may have left out the first time. And uh, quite honestly, I got a lot of new subscribers and a lot of new people watching the channel. So this is for you guys. In simple terms, the difference between the two is mono, monofilament, means one. It is basically one strand, one continuous fiber. Whereas braided line is, well, like the braids I used to have in my hair for one of the videos, it is a weave of fibers that are all put together. Now each of these lines has some good points and some bad points, and it really depends on what type of fishing that you're doing on which one's gonna work out best for you. So we're gonna talk about some of the benefits of each. Now I'll start with braid because for most people, when people think of braid, they think of it's a stronger line. And in some ways, to a certain extent, it is. It has a lot more strength in a smaller diameter than monofilament does. What this means is you can get a lot of line on a reel, much more line than you can with monofilament. And this comes in very handy especially when you're dealing with big fish that can take a lot of line off of your reels. Now it's one of the reasons I use braided line when I'm fishing in the salt water for sharks. I like to fish for sharks. And on the spinning tackle that I use, using braid gives me a lot of line for those big runs and it's a lot more line than I can get with monofilament. Now one of the other big reasons that I use braided line is for line sensitivity. It's a very sensitive line. When you pair this up with a graphite rod, you can really feel the most subtle bite. And I like using this when I'm fishing for crappie, white perch, and bluegill. I know it seems kind of crazy that you're using such a strong line for such small fish, but this is where I feel braided line has a big advantage, and that is being able to feel every little subtle bite. Now, if you watch any of my videos, you know I fish a lot for catfish, and in many parts of the country, guys do what they call bottom bouncing, to where you are basically floating down a river or across a lake, and you're vertical fishing, feeling the bottom with a sinker, trying to get catfish to take the bait. This is a good place for using braided line. Again, being able to feel that bottom, feel everything you've got down there, whether it be a soft bottom, a hard bottom, rocks, trees, or a fish biting, this is a great place where braid really telecasts and sends that bite up the rod. You pair it with the right rod, something with a little stiffer rod, like a graphite rod, and man, you can feel everything going on down there. Now, another reason that people like braided line is they say it casts better. Uh, I honestly don't really sling baits a super long way. I am not setting any casting records, but if properly spooled onto the rod, braid does go through the guides very very easy especially at some of the smaller diameters so you can really sling this line so if you're in a situation where you're needing to cast you're needing to get some distance especially some of you guys who are confined to the bank and doing bank fishing braided line may be something that you want to try now one final thing and one good reason to buy braid is well how long it lasts um I know you're supposed to change this stuff out just like you would any other line, but I'll be honest with you, I don't do it. I've got it on a bunch of my saltwater fishing reels, and uh, it's been on there for years. Uh, seriously, it has, uh, one of the rules of thumb is when it starts to change color, it's time to swap it out. But man, I keep using this stuff. Uh, it just keeps working and keeps catching fish. One of the things you can do uh, it was like with a lot of lines, the line that is buried down in the spool on the reel never sees daylight. So what I will do, get a new reel, I will take my line that has been on a reel and re tie it onto the new reel and spool it on to that reel so that your old line is getting buried in the bottom of the spool and your new line is on the outside. So 
I can go from using a line for two or three years to four, five, six years. So honestly, in all seriousness, one of the great benefits of braid is just how long it lasts. Now, what are the downsides? Well, uh, along with it lasting a long time, you get a lot of bang for your buck because you're gonna pay more. Braided line costs more money. That's probably one of the uh, biggest things that somebody will know when they go to buy it and go to pick it up. It is expensive, significantly more than monofilament. So uh, when you cast out there and you get it snagged and you have to cut your line off, you're losing a, a good chunk of money. But again, the trade-off is it lasts a long time. The other downside to braid, believe it or not, even as strong as it is, is it's not abrasion resistant uh, compared to mono. Mono resists abrasion much better. Monofilament can take a small nick in the line and still hold a lot of strength. Whereas braid, if you get a few cuts in the fiber, a couple of fibers broken, it starts to come undone much faster than monofilament does. So if you're fishing an area that's real rocky, rough, monofilament, all things being equal, same diameter line is gonna do better than braid. Now, if you watch my videos, you'll know I use monofilament too. Use monofilament for most of the freshwater fishing that I use. And I'll tell you why I use it. Uh, one of the biggest reasons I use monofilament, one of the great things about it is, it's very forgiving. And that is because monofilament stretches. There is some stretch to it. You can take a piece of it and stretch it. It'll bounce back. Braid does not do that. Braid has virtually no stretch. Forgiveness does a couple of things. Uh, one thing is uh, when you get on what I call a short leash, when you've just got a little line between you and the fish, and that fish makes a sudden head shake or jerk, that is when you can break a line, and uh, especially with you know stiffer, stronger lines like the uh, braided line, when they get to do a head jerk, there's no forgiveness, there's no stretch, and it's very easy to either break the line or pull the hook out of the fish's mouth, depending on how it is hooked. So that is one of the things I like about monofilament is that stretch. Uh, it's very forgiving. It will save you. Uh, it, it will save you in a lot of situations. And uh, it's one of the biggest reasons that I love using monofilament. As I said earlier, it is cheaper. Uh, it gives you the ability to swap out line without giving much thought to it. Uh, whenever you're out fishing, you get snagged up. Or say you load up a fish and you're really stretching that line and pulling on it and, and putting a lot of load on it. It's very easy and very affordable to come back, pull that line off of there, and replace half of what's on your spool. Uh, with braid, not so much. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I like it, is just how affordable it is. I know I can put line on there once or twice a year and have fresh line ready to go with no little nicks or bad places in it. For me, knot tying is easier with monofilament line. One of the things about braided line, especially with some of these super slick ones like I've been using from Power Pro, is some knots will slip. Uh, they will slide because the braid, by its design, uh, does not bite in as much uh, as the monofilament does. With monofilament, pretty much any fishing knot will work. And uh, that's one of the good things about it. Uh, with braid, you got to be a little more careful on your knot tying. And the last thing, as I alluded to earlier, is abrasion resistance. I love the abrasion resistance of monofilament line. Uh, I've had I've pulled some fish in before and gotten them in that have got around rocks and trees, and I've somehow got them free. And when I got in, I have had 15 or 20 feet of abrasions and tears and shreds, but I got the fish in and the line held up. And that's probably one of the great features of monofilament. It's just its ability to still perform, still bring fish in, even, even after being damaged. Well, there you go, guys. That's a lot of points and a lot of features. And there's a lot of different people watching this video. And that's the biggest reason I do these videos and have redone some of them. It's to let you guys know, no matter what you're fishing for, there's no perfect line. There's no one line, especially if you fish from multiple species. Uh, you've got different lines, different tools for different things that you're doing. Uh, it's like I've said before, 
Uh, these are just tools, some of the tools that we have as anglers. A uh, carpenter doesn't build a house with just a saw. It takes a whole uh, box and truck full of tools to make that happen. And that's kind of the way you have to look at this as an angler. Figure out what you're fishing for. Figure out what your needs and demands are specific to the area you're fishing. And then go and pick which one of these lines uh, to use in that particular environment that you are fishing in. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.